a low adventure rider from around the world. We all know how difficult it is to find the proper machine, especially when you're on budget. In this video, I'm going to make a detailed video review of BMW F650. Stay with me. Welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pavlin and I'm a motorcycle traveler. Usually in this channel I upload videos for anything related to long motorcycle trips. So maybe this is a good reason to subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Today I'm gonna make a detailed video review of this BMW F650. But this is a, a first video of the series of, of the videos I, I plan to make in the next few months. And they will be mostly about budget motorcycles because we know how easy it is to travel when you have money you can go to the shop and buy something the last models you can find for 10 15 even 20 thousand euros but it's very difficult story when you're on budget what i usually do is go to the shop see what is the new model take it for a few hours just right and then i can share my opinion but with these old motorcycles it's not like that today thanks to my cameraman at the moment and the owner of this motorcycle Jivan, i've got the chance to have it write it and discuss it so every time when i've got this chance of course i'm happy to do it so if you have some of these old uh, so-called adventure or travel motorcycles and you want me to make a review to come ride it and talk about it you are more than welcome to send me an email and we'll see what can i do uh, of course keep in mind that uh, you, you have to be in berlin or at least two or three hundred kilometers away but no longer than that because i cannot spend a week just to see one motorcycle all right let's go back to the bike so this is bmw f650 this is the model from 1996 so this is already 22 years old motorcycle but it actually has at the moment 22,000 kilometers so this is a very very good option for everyone who is on budget so once again 22,000 kilometers my Yamaha at the moment got 140,000 kilometers and has the same 650 cc the same horsepower 48 so the, the the plus of this motorcycle is that at the moment they are very very cheap the owner of the bike bought it for less than 1,500 euros the difference between this model and the next model, which is uh, F650 GS Dakar, is that this still got the petrol tank on the top here, on the uh, standard uh, petrol position, not like the new Dakar, which is, has the petrol tank under the seat. To be honest, I quite like the design. It's a very, very simple, basic, and has everything what motorcycle rider need. The front wheel is a 19 inch it is not like the dakar version 21 but guys most of you 90 percent of the riders include me will never even notice the difference between 19 and 21 inch unless you go to ride off-road and more serious off-road so 19 inch on the front and 17 on the back the engine is a 650 cc and it's 48 horsepower this is the famous rotax engine and you can see what it is the standard food packs if you plan some off-road trips maybe you have to change it the brake pedal is is the standard it has a, a low fender which is good i like that the distance here is not that much but i'm sure with some modifications here you can move it probably with one centimeter if you really worry that you can stuck with the mud here but i don't think that this is a motorcycle to go in the mud the radiator is not covered it's open here so probably if you plan to travel the world you have to find some kind of protection here or you might damage it it's the same for the engine so if you want to travel probably you need to buy something to protect it these crash guards are not stock they are bought separately but this is too weak and too light and if you drop the bike they will probably damage it more then they will work i like how they designed the indicator so they are almost with the bike the profile is very low so even if you drop it it will hit the handlebar but i don't think that you can damage the indicators you can see some water already drop it here and it is still fine the windscreen it has it has the perfect windscreen now because it has my sticker but it is the original windscreen and it is too short too short so if you are over 170 you will definitely need a tall windscreen 
The seed height is uh, 81 centimeters and it has this curvy shape which one many of you love. I'm not a big fan on it because when you sit it slides you always exactly to the same position but I have to say that it's very very comfortable. It has also a mud protector on the rear wheel, this one here and if you plan some bumpy roads and uh, with a lot of potholes this will probably break but for the normal road use it is not a problem to keep it there the tile is also not bad a big light indicators this is the stock muffler okay let's start the engine now and listen the sound It is not really impressive, but keep in mind that this is the stock. I still like the pumping sound. The dashboard is very, very simple. Speedometers and RPMs on the left hand side. It has a temperature gauge, which is very good. And here are all the lights, neutral, all indicators and the headlights. The handlebar, very, very simple, 22 millimeters, very weak if you ask me, with the simple buttons which everyone, everyone who ever sit on the motorcycle uh, know. The, uh, the mirrors, I don't think that these are the stock mirrors, I believe that they are, are later and they look good, but the visibility is not that good because they cut a lot of space from the, from the that, so I don't think that this is a good option, I prefer what big and white mirrors the suspension the suspension it's very very soft i'm gonna show you after a while when i sit on the bike but this is the standard suspension it's not the upside down it's a standard suspension and the travel it's no more than 150 60 millimeters i believe also the, the ground clearance is not much so as i said for everyone who plan to have more off-road i will suggest to go to Dakar version. The shock absorber it's adjustable or at least you can preload it a little bit from here but now the moment is up to the max and it is still soft. The forks are absolutely not adjustable. But let me show you how big the bike is and how it suits me ergonomically. So as you know already I am 185 a little above six feet and I have absolutely flat feet. I even have this five, six centimeters. So as I said, the seat height is uh, 81 centimeters. So this bike is perfectly suitable for short riders. I do believe that even riders with 170 will have a flat feet and will be very, very comfortable because of this curvy seat. The position of the handlebar, it's comfortable for me, even without any handlebar risers and anything. It's all right if I plan to ride on the street. If I plan to have a standing position, of course it's not going to be possible with this set, but it could be easily managed with a bar riser and different handlebar. But as I told you already, the tank is only 17 liters, but it is on the standard position here, and you can uh, have at least 350 kilometers before you need to refill. So forget about big tank, you don't really need it because in the most of the places around Europe, even around the world, you will find a petrol station before you run out of petrol. This model is a carburetor and as most of the carburetor bikes, it hasn't got a full gauge, which is a little bit like minus. But once you start to use it, you learn how to use it properly and you have a reserve. So it has a 14 liters in the tank and 3 liters in the reserve. So you learn very fast and I don't think that this is a, a problem. It has 320 millimeter disc with a Brembo brakes, which is very good. I, I have to say the brakes are more than enough. And it has on the rear side, again, Brembo caliber with 240 millimeter disc. This is the standard luggage rack for most of you. People who love top boxes, yes, you can use for your top box or just to have your duffel back on the top. These are for panniers. They are optional, they are not stock. I told you already, this is the Rotax engine, which is with dry sump, so you actually fill the oil from here, and which is good and bad. It is good because it will allow you to ride the bike in any angle and you will still have oil 
but it's bad because the changing the oil to changing the oil it's a little bit complicated and something that sounds not like so important but because it's coming from the owner of the bike jiva i think that it's worth to mention this is the the front fender here it's too short when you ride actually all the water from the wheel go into the engine and to your boot so this is something like a easy fixable with an extension but just i want to say it in the video all right enough talks let's go to right now the first thing i notice right from when i jump on the bike is that it is so so light so light you feel it It is 190 kilograms with everything, with uh, 17 liters of petrol and almost 3 liters of oil. So it is a noticeable lighter than any other motorcycles I rode in the last few years. The suspension is very soft, really, really soft. So if you're a heavy guy like me, you will probably need to to find something else or to maybe to change the springs or make something with the suspension it is perfectly okay to ride it around the city to stay in the traffic you have a good visibility because it's a tall bike you actually see on the top of the cars as you can see at the moment which is good and because of the seat height you can have this flat feet on the ground which is a very good plus excellent it has more than enough power to overtake and the maneuvers are not a problem at all because of the size and the weight of the bike the dashboard is very very visible and this white here make it even better so i can see at every moment on uh, what speed i've got or what rpms which is good the visibility in the mirrors as i said already I will prefer to have something bigger and wider but it is what it is as I said more than enough power to overtake and it will be enough as long as you plan to stay on this type of terrains or on the highway with 110 20 now we go to the highway and we'll see what exactly it is but I already know what I'm gonna see because it has the same power as uh, my motorcycle Let's get the highway. It's staying very, very good on the corners. Hundred kilometers per hour, four thousand RPM. As you can see, so the red scale starts from seven point five. So I don't think it's a good idea to ride for a long time on more than 5,000 RPM. But if you need to overtake, yeah, sure, absolutely. Now I am on 120 with 5,000 RPM. And I have a very, very powerful blast from the wind because I have no windshield. But the bike is very, very stable and surprisingly, no vibration for a single cylinder it has almost zero vibration so i think that engineers of this Rotax engine and the chassis and the bike at all did a very very good job so as i said it is not a bike to spend your time on the highway but if you have to now i have even 140 with almost 6000 rpm you can see it all right so now we have a speed limit 80 here whether it's to slow down but on that speed like 80 90 to 100 kilometers per hour the bike is just perfect it has more than enough power if you have to overtake now i am on fifth gear and if i twist the throttle it's full not hard but it's full enough i really like the dashboard it is so visible and these analog clocks you don't really need to focus on the numbers because 
when you have the bike for a while you will know where it's 4000 and where it's 100 and it is just one very simple look a couple of part of the second and you're done you know exactly what it is perfect i'm surprised how stable is the bike really even without windscreen i'm very very pleased from the highway test keep in mind that the bike costs only 1500 euro it is 22 years old and if i compare this bike to the last uh, expensive bike i tested ktm uh, 790s man i don't think that the ktm cost 10 times more i just couldn't believe it i just couldn't believe it because the bikes are bikes if the geometry of the bike is good if the engine is good it will work look at now how stable it is i don't even hold the handlebar and stay perfectly with almost zero vibration it go easily up to 140 kilometers per hour it is not a problem to cruise with uh, 100 110 kilometers per hour very very easy to do maneuvers you can lift it if you drop it because it is only 190 kilograms so far i can say only positive things about this model perfect for city riding as you can see now just to do maneuvers filtering between the cars go on the car parkings now i'll just try to find a car parking to make a, a few maneuvers over there perfect option for commuting because you will face roads like this in towns between the towns anything from 50 to 100 kilometers per hour will be just the sweet spot for this motorcycle yeah on the highways you will need a little bit more power but you can do it just fine if you're not really uh, like one of these guys who want to be always first flexibility yes absolutely again i'm surprised how good the brakes are can you filter between the cars absolutely it is not white absolutely without any problem if you haven't seen frankfurt other now is the moment it is not very famous german town everybody know frankfurt the mine but not many people ever heard about frankfurt other let's do some maneuvers on the car parking like this if you want to u-turn yeah you don't need much space let's see this one because of the angle of turning and of the weight of the bike oh it is so easy it's actually a pleasure to ride it on the places like that it is just so simple it's like you having a a bicycle perfect so guys with few words let me summarize everything very cheap to buy very easy to ride very cheap and easy to maintain what else do you need hmm. i think nothing yeah it is not the best bike you can see on the market today yeah it is not the most powerful bike or the most uh, beautiful bike but it is the bike that will go anywhere anytime i will say that the city ride was a pleasure because the bike is so light and so easy to ride all right conclusion is this the best bike of the world the best adventure motorcycle no absolutely not but for the price 1500 euros this is one tenth of the price of most of the famous adventure motorcycles today it's absolutely deserve the attention you might have uh, i found just a two small cons the clearance is very low and the suspension is very soft but if you plan to stay mostly on the road it will be just a perfect option and just give it a try i will highly recommend this bike to everyone who has a plus to have a long trips especially on the third world countries this will be just just perfect because it's a very very simple 
bike and keep in mind that the bike is just a tool the travel is what really matters the adventure is the state of mind and you can reach it with almost anything as usual thank you very much for watching guys don't forget to subscribe see you next time ciao